tonight as far as anytime you come out for the first game, you you know you you have concerns about things like penalties and substitutions and um, tackling. You know, a lot of things coming out of camp that um, only games take care of. Uh, but I thought that was pretty clean. We had three penalties, um, and so that was, it was a pretty clean game that way. I thought we tackled fairly well, um, but. Uh, you know, as far as organizationally and managing the game and all that kind of stuff, I thought for the first time out, it was it was pretty clean. And how about the atmosphere? Atmosphere was good. Um, you know, pre-game stuff. I, you know, it was a little quiet in the stadium, but I totally understand. I appreciate all the fans being there. Uh, it was sweltering in there, you know. And as I looked up into the crowd, trying to get them to get a little bit louder, but. You know, I just saw him fanning himself, you know, and it was, I know it was sweltering. So I just appreciate him being there, uh, being a part of what we were doing, uh, honoring Derek, of course. Um, so it was a great night. You know, I'm, I'm glad the stadium was, was full. And, and uh, you know, so I hope we can continue to do that as the season goes on. And I know you demand a high standard, and you're not going to get ahead of yourself or too excited, but could your first game as the head coach have unfolded any better than it did? Yeah, yeah. I suppose a lot to get better at, you know, or with, um, you know, certain things, you know. But again, first game coming out, don't know the opponent really, you know. And they did a few things early that we had to we had to sort out, you know, which kind of shut our run game down early. Uh, but they were able to get on track. But it gave us an opportunity to make adjustments on the sideline and you know communicate with our players on what they're seeing and all the things that go on during a game. But I thought defensively we played really well. We ran to the ball. A lot of things we've really been working on um, as far as what our standards are. Uh, I thought our kids took it from the practice field to the game field pretty well. And now you move on to play the number one team in the nation, the gold standard of college football. Is, do you look at that as a measuring stick to measure yourself against the best? Well, there's no doubt. I mean, there's very few people in the country that have uh, the personnel that Alabama has. There's no chinks in their armor anywhere. Um, every player on their team, every player on the field um, are, are great players. And, uh, you know, so one on one matchups are really difficult uh, with them. Uh, they're just, they coach very, very well. They play very hard. Their schemes are very solid. Uh, you know, so they're big and physical and fast and, and can make a lot of plays. So, um, you know, it's obviously it's a it's a huge challenge for us, but it's a great opportunity, you know, to go play in that environment, 100,000 fans, and, and against the number one team in the nation, great opportunity for us. Coach, the two deep looks the same as it was last week. Is the plan to run the same personnel out in the same order as last week? Uh, the two deep has not changed. Uh, who takes the field first? I'm not sure. It depends on, typically, that depends on what plays we're running because uh, we're fairly personnel oriented. So that really just depends, but the two deep hasn't changed. Right. Coach, I mean, one week, I, I can't imagine there's too many teams in college football that go from you know, step up the competition from week one to week two as much as you guys do. What do you, how do you prepare your players mentally um, for that step up in competition, you know, through words, or, or do you say anything just knowing that they know that already? You don't need to say anything. How do you, how do you, how do you prepare them well, for that? Really, we don't need to do anything different than what we've been doing, um, you know, because we shouldn't fluctuate our practice habits um, depending on who we're playing. You know, continue to focus on your fundamentals and take care of the details and take care of the little things and don't worry about the big things. And I've been really pleased with our team through camp um, and going into the first game of their preparation, and nothing changes. It, you know, obviously we're playing the number one team in the nation, but it wouldn't matter if we're playing them or someone else. You know, our standards and how we practice and what our practice habits are should not change from week to week. Coach, have you had a chance to look at them on film yet for this week? And have, what do you see? Yeah, I have. Uh, getting into, I've watched some games of them and, and started breaking down you know, certain things in preparation, and uh, we're in the process of that. That's what Monday's used for. So. We're into a little bit and continue throughout the week. Any other questions back here? <coughs> um, 
you talked about the two deep and not being sure who's going to go out in which order. Um, on punt returns, DeJounte had a really nice one early, but then a couple of fumbles. You put Ronnie Rivers back there. Is the plan to give DeJounte another shot to start the game, or do you want to start with Rivers or possibly somebody else? We'll see. We'll see how the week goes. We worked on it yesterday. Um, you know, we, we lost the ball a couple times in the sky. They were kicking some old balls that really didn't have any white stripes on them. And so it was really hard to find the ball in the sky. I don't know if it's the lighting in our stadium or what. The guy was a great punter, by the way. He was he was kicking rockets, you know, and, and so and so will the guy um, this week. This guy's awesome, and, uh, but it's in the daytime, and you should be able to track the ball a little bit better. But a couple of times we looked down to see the coverage and then re and tried to find the ball again and had a hard time finding it in the sky, you know. So, uh, but we're going to continue to work at it. Uh, Jonte's very agile, and he's done a great job through camp. That's why he was back there in the beginning. Um, so I'm not going to hold those things against him so much. We're going to keep working on it. We have two guys there. Whoever goes in this week, uh, we'll see how the week goes and, and make that determination when when uh, game time comes. Um, how would you evaluate uh, Chasen's, Chasen's play? He seemed he had a couple drives where he was inaccurate, but then later in you know, his last three drives, he was pretty accurate. Was there some change there? Was he doing something better? What did you see on film from that? Yeah, he missed a couple easy ones. I think his eyes weren't, um, weren't where they needed to be and uh, and got caught late trying to throw balls late and just missed guys, uh, mainly in the almost the same route, really, the flat route, you know, to the right. So we worked on that uh, yesterday. And, um, you know, but for the most part, I thought he made good decisions, didn't throw into traffic. Um, protected the football, managed the game fine. And, um, you know, but yeah, those those type of things in your first game, uh, to come back and work on them uh, is really critical, and that's what we did yesterday. Uh, missed a guy when he scrambled right in the back of the end zone, so we worked on that yesterday, that throw. Um, so, yeah, it's, um, there's we know he's capable of making those throws. Um, he just happened to miss them that night. He. he he had a throw, I think it was on his, his last drive, or it may have been the second to last drive to Damari Scott. It was kind of across the field. It was kind of the play that he kind of made with his feet and then found the receiver. Is that a, is that a, I mean, it was a, it was a good play, a positive play for your team. Is that a good throw when you saw it on film? Is that one that you want him to repeat? Yeah, I'm, you know, I, he, he made some throws like that, you know, where he got out and he, he Remember, he hit Mims over there. He scrambled out and got, got the ball to Mims. Mims missed his blocking assignment. And Jason made a guy miss and had a guy hanging on him and, and threw a completion, which is a key first down. Mims took it down the sideline. And so he's capable of doing those things. It's, you know, we just need to be more consistent with it. Else? Andrew? Would you like to get Jorge Reyna into the game against Alabama? Is there a plan for that? No, there's not a plan for that. Whether it works out that way, I don't know. But there's not a plan for that as of today. Coach, I know every game to you is the same. But for the players, I know they're probably going to be jacked up, 102,000 fans. How do you keep them from maybe being a little outside themselves early in the game? And what's the key early for you guys to kind of jump on them? Well, well, we'll talk about it through the week. Obviously, it's going to be a great environment. It'll be a lot of electricity in the stadium, and um, you know, and that's why you know when we go there on Friday, we will we'll walk the field and kind of get some of that out a little bit. Um, you know, not just show up on game day. Uh, try to get familiar with the setting and things like that. But uh, you know, there's there's no question that we just need to. You can't get overly emotional about it. You know, you have to stay within yourself, um, getting up for it and for the challenge. You know, that won't be. You know, it won't be because they're not uh, excited to play. You know, it's it's they'll go there excited to play, and and it'll be a great environment. You know, and uh, but how you handle things. You know, it's our first time on the road, so anytime you go on the road with 100,000 fans, like you said, it's going to be loud, and so. Um, you have to control that a little bit and make sure that we're really focused on what's going on and have great communication. All the things you need to do on the road. Coach, you're uh, known as a quarterback expert, and I know you were seen Friday of Jalen Hurts and even in that opening against Florida State. When you look at him and the challenges that he poses for your defense, what are the things that jump out to you? 
his ability to extend the play and make huge plays with his legs. You know, he's um, he can pull it down and, and really hurt you. You know, he's a strong runner. He's very fast. Uh, he's strong. Um, he's not going down. He's not that guy to run and slide. You know, he's the guy that's looking to make huge plays with his legs. And uh, he's a physical guy and can run through tackles. So he's like another running back, you know, and, and so you have to put your body on him and get him to the ground because he's not just going to go slide for you. And all their backs are huge. I mean, some of their backs are bigger than some of your defensive ends. Is, is there a bigger factor in this game that you guys don't have the physicality of the linesmen? No, I, I mean, that's – you have to be physical no matter what game you're playing uh, up front. They are very physical on both sides of the ball. Um, have great size, great ability, um, you know, and so – those backs aren't coming down with arm tackles. You know, they're huge backs, and um, they run with good pad level. So tackling is going to be key to make sure that we're running our feet and we're able to, to get guys on the ground is going to be key, you know, and gang tackle and run into the ball, you know, so that, you know, we have more than one guy there to help bring them down. But they're big and physical backs, and they're very fast, you know, and so um, they're, they're the elite for sure. They're, they're the best in the country. Well, it's, you know, when, when Pete was at USC, they were very dominant, no question about it. Um, they had great talent, great schemes, the whole bit. Um, we beat them once in triple overtime, and, and really that came down to turnovers that we were able to, to take the ball away in, in key situations. Um, but uh, typically that's what this comes down to is, is being able to, to turn, win the turnover battle to have a chance and so that's going to be key that we can take the ball away uh, and then hang on to it ourselves. and and field positions another real key in it you know that we can be really good on special teams and hopefully flip the, flip the field from time to time and make them go the distance uh, and try to give ourselves a short field because it's really hard to drive the ball sustained drives against these guys Coach, you've done a really good job of recruiting the Valley since you've been back here and talking about bringing Fresno State back to its roots. How do you use this game as a recruiting opportunity and possibly expanding to other parts of the country? Well, expanding to other parts of the country is not really our goal in recruiting. Uh, you know, we're a California-based uh, recruiting program uh, starting with the Valley and uh, staying in the Western United States. There's really no need for us to uh, – to use our resources to go back east to recruit. Uh, but I think when you play these type of teams, it's great for your, it is great for recruiting because people want to play these teams. And we have these type of teams on our schedule, you know, for the next, whatever it is, five years. Um, not Alabama every year, uh, but, um, you know, we have, you know, UCLA and USC and Texas A&M and people like that, that, that um, you know, are big time programs that our kids you know, like to play. And so you can always use a schedule, um, you know, that's that's good for recruiting uh, because kids want to play them. Coach, you kept it a mystery as far as the uniforms you wore. You come out with the old script. I personally like that helmet the best. Um, what was the decision behind that? Or is that going to be a home thing? And do you have any uh, updates on the road uniform this week? Don't have any updates on the road uniform this week uh, yet. We'll make that decision probably later today. Um, but there were white involved in it. <laughs> like, like we talked about last week, there will be red involved with it. Um, but uh, uh, the script piece is just something that uh, was kind of a throwback. The players really, um, really liked it and felt like it was a great look. And we have the ability to go back and forth between the bulldog and the script. And so uh, we'll probably change out from week to, you know, here and there. Consistency, you know, it's it's hard to stay at the top, and uh, you know, so I think his drive, uh, the discipline that his players play with, uh, obviously they do a great job in recruiting. They have the best players in the country, um, 
you know, and it's it's so evident that it's every position. You know, it's it's every position they recruit to the things that they do, and um, you know, it's but consistency I think is really hard. You know, there's no complacency there whatsoever. Um, you know, when you stay at the top like that, and every week is so demanding. Um, for them to be able to sustain like that is really impressive. So obviously he's doing a great job with that and, and keeping the standard really high and the expectation really high for his players. And, um, you know, so it's just evident the way they play, um, that doesn't happen by accident. You know, you could have the best players in the nation and not play hard, uh, but they have the best players in the nation and play hard. So uh, he does a great job.